a minute to tell you a little bit about me. I know you've seen uh, things on the website of the school district, but I am a lifelong educator. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I've worked in schools across New York City as a teacher. I started in a very challenging school where I um, cut my teeth and learned how to figure out how to help students in a challenging place. I left there eight years later. I was teacher of the year, and it was a lot of hard work. And I feel like every other job that I've ever had has to do with teaching and working with people and figuring out how children can help children and adults can help children. It is 30 years where I supported students in schools, parents, and community members. At some point, I felt the law was broken and I did take action. So, where we have been pinned against each other and open wounds that go so deep in this community, are you aware of how fractured and divided our community is because of this decision? I want you to know. Are you aware? I was aware when I came into the school community that there were fractures and concerns that I could support in terms of bringing people together. I hear the concerns tonight. I hear what you're saying. I believe that there is work to be done here to bring people together. And I hear the concerns that people have. Um, yes, I hear what you're saying. I wanted to be, and I want to be the solution to that. I want to be able to hear and bring people together so that I can hear your concerns and your hopes and dreams for the school system. My experience across the school system has brought people together. And that opportunity and that experience that I have, I want to be able to bring it to the school community. I want to be a part of New Rochelle. There are so many great things that happened here. The first things I heard about coming here and what attracted me to here was that sense of community, lifelong residency, that people stayed here for long periods of time because they believed in the schools and they believed in diversity and they wanted to move things forward. And I was attracted to that, to be a part of a community like this that could really the things that you're doing in the schools and the advancement that you want to take, I think match my expertise. So I believe that we can do this together. Here in Rochelle. Here in Rochelle. My question is, um, so we've heard through this, this process of hiring the superintendent that they did not follow the own, the Board of Education's own bylaws and rules. Can you give an explanation why that wasn't followed? And I can tell you that I do not believe that even if Dr. Fejo was not here and had not appointed her, and we were still in the midst of a search that we would consider bringing members of the community in to be involved in a superintendent search. Uh, welcome to New Rochelle. Um, <laughs> I, I don't believe I don't believe you, you've answered any of our questions thus far. So that's sad. Very sad. Um, my question is: uh, We believe we're a community that believes in rules, policies laws. So the Board of Education did not follow the bylaws. With all due respect, Amy, I disagree with you. So how do you feel, Dr. Fehu, about um, entering into a situation where the Board unethically, illegally, has circumvented the will of the community Amen. and you're here? So it's an illegal hire, it's an unethical hire, how do you feel about that? So I'm not going to see what I've got to say Any questions having to do with how
how she should pay the superintendent should be directed to the board and should be handled in a different circumstance. She did not answer. She has to answer. She has to answer. She has to answer. How does Dr. Fayho feel about I am excited to be a part of this community. I understand this is a difficult forum. I understand that this is not the kind of welcome someone would imagine coming into a school community, excited to do work. I love children, I love education, it's all I've ever done. I believe that there's an opportunity here to come together, and I believe over time you'll see the person that I am, the educator that I am, and how much I care about kids and families and schools. It is the legacy that I've had across the system, in school districts, across the city. Whatever has brought me here, I am here to do the work that I've always done and that I want to do here in New Rochelle. And I do look forward to working with you, each and every one of you, to figure out those next steps that can begin to, that can begin to heal the community before this and the problems that were here and the next steps that need to happen and whatever else it takes to be a part of this community and to have you really see me and understand me as the educator that I am. It is all I wanted to do and I really believe over time you will see that about me. We won't. Someone who cares, as you said, so much about equity and that your record shows that, so much about children, how would you feel about potentially stepping aside in order to heal what is quite possibly one of the biggest damages that will happen in our school community. So I'm asking you, will you step down? In the interest of the kids. For each opportunity that I've been provided, I am 100% committed to New Rochelle and the work here. I went through a process I've spoken to a number of people. I want to begin to work with everyone in the school community, but I am 100% committed to New Rochelle. 100% committed to Lawson. Dr. Fahey, welcome. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to welcome you to New Rochelle. I wanted to say to you, there's obviously a lot of people here who think that you can't possibly have their best interests at heart due to the lawsuit that you filed. and. I'm an employment lawyer, so I understand you can't speak freely about a lot of that. But <clears throat> what we do want to hear is comfort that you actually will hear what the Black and Latinx communities need and take up their cause and how you're going to go about it based on what you've done before and ideas what you have for the future. Thank you. So, so one of the ways I want to come into the school district is meeting with have different challenges and different needs. And what I benchmark in education is what I want for them. I want them to have opportunity and access, to have perseverance, to be able to deal with situations so that they can themselves persevere in life. They are two different girls that have um, different abilities and talents. And I'm constantly trying to find the right match for them so they can pursue the dreams and challenge, the dreams and hopes that they have for themselves. Some of them, sometimes there are struggles and sometimes there are not, but putting kids on the path to success means teaching them to advocate for themselves, to ask for the things that they need, to be able to ask for help when they have challenges, and to have access to the absolute best teachers and the absolute best opportunities that they can possibly have. And that's what I want for each and every child and why I want to come to your show. I was looking for a new chapter in my life and the opportunity presented itself. It is definitely not the beginning that I would have hoped. 
the cheering and the happiness, the getting to know me and understand me. And I am nervous tonight. I think you can hear that in my voice. I want to be here and I want to do this work. I know that there are wonderful people here that only care about education. I appreciate that people are saying exactly what they're thinking because the hardest thing to do is when people are talking behind your back. I see that that'll never be a problem here in Labor Show. Tell me directly, I'll hear directly from you. There will be no secrets. I want to know it. I am committed to this because I believe in education and I do believe that communities can heal. If I can just defer for one, when I became a principal, it was a brand new school where people were so excited about coming to this school. It was a lottery school, and the borough president put her reputation on it, the Queens College School for Math, Science, and Technology, the entire university, the college put their uh, hands into it. It was going to be the best school ever. And what happened is everyone's hopes and dreams didn't get realized because everybody thought somebody else was doing it. The parents would not talk to the teachers because they felt that they were not treating their kids in their best interest. They felt like the teachers were not, you know, ascribing to some prescribed curriculum. The college wanted to be a part of the everyday process in the school. The community was so fractured that three principals before me walked out. And I went in there and people said to me, why would you go to that school? You could be a principal any place. Why would you go with your history and what you've done and the great communities you've been able to work with, why would you go to that school? It's because they needed me at that time. It was a challenge, it was a difficult situation, and it was a match. For whatever reason, faith brings things together, I do believe faith brought me here. And I understand that there are challenges and not everybody believes that, but when I commit to something, I do it 110%. I did that my entire career, even when it's hard. I am not a person that walks away from something, even when it's not understood. And I am committed to this, and I really want to be able to change things here in New Rochelle, and I want people to give me the opportunity to do that. And I appreciate, honestly, the front dialogue Anybody who knows me a long period of time, I say exactly what I'm thinking, and I expect the other person to do the same. I would never want someone to work for me and not be able to be totally honest with you. And I hear what you're saying, and I hear the concern, and I still want to be here to support the community. Uh, good morning, I've been an educator 21 years, from children six weeks all the way to 21. I've been a professor. I'm culminating my degree with a doctoral degree in education. And I want to understand if you really understand what your lawsuit means. Do you really understand how it slaps the black and brown community, people in this community in the face? We deal with this every day. I deal with it. The mic's off. No, one moment so that everyone can hear you. Hello? Okay, continue. We deal with it all the time. And we have to make a decision, a lot of us, if we just want a job and we have to be quiet. I don't think you understand. You stand before us and say, I'm, in, I'm engaged in a reverse discrimination. You have no idea what discrimination is. You have no idea what it means to suck up a whole bunch of crap just to have a job. You have no idea how many times many of us have been passed over because of someone, because of a structural system that doesn't benefit us. And now we have someone here after all the things that we have been through in a year and a half. This community has been through so much. And someone who is saying, I stood up for myself, that's what you believe. Just answer the question. You believe that it exists. I'm telling you, it doesn't. Equity means, equity means you have to share something. It means that the, the dominant community has to give up something so that we can be present. It is not enough to have one of us in the room. It's not, that's like, oh, we have one, we got a diversity. We didn't ask for a diversity person. So whoever's mad about that, we didn't ask for that. She can keep that, because that, that's just one of us. One person cannot speak for all of us. What I need is not what she needs, it's not what she needs, it's not. You have 
to heal the community. Here in New Rochelle. Fighting for the black community. Fighting for the community of New Rochelle. I've worked with many people. White, black, Hispanic, Democrat, Republican. And I have taken some flack for working with Republicans <laughs> in my community. But I work with anybody that will work with me to move the ball forward. And she's talking about something. We, we fought together, an eclectic group of people, fighting to save our black majority district. And we fought down, and we lost. Over uh, 10 years ago, I started advocating for diversity in this school district. Forced them to write, to rewrite a diversity policy, along with an eclectic group of people. Ms. Oliver, Bob Cox, believe it or not. <laughs> and, uh, and just a few of us. But we fought for a new diversity policy and it paid dividends. We had, we had a wonderful African-American principal, Reginald Richardson. We had a, <laughs> we had a wonderful uh, assistant superintendent of, uh, of HR, Dr. Joe Williams. How <laughs> it was diversity. Yeah. And in the last two years, Guess what? We lost everything. We lost every senior African American administrator in this district. And on top of that, this Board of Education, this is a constant refrain of disrespecting the African American community. Every senior African American administrator in this district. This Board of Education, without any input from the community, hires Ms. Fayou, who, who I, I don't know, she seems like a, 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 a wonderful person, but the fact of the matter is that she is, and she says it here today, and she does not understand how disrespectful that is, that she is 100% committed to a reverse discrimination lawsuit. That is the antithesis of the values, not only of the black community, but the community of New Rochelle as a whole. I'm tired of being a victim of, of, of of disrespect, of insensitivity, of, cult, of, of cultural incompetence, when most of the board doesn't even bother to read the, the, the lawsuit before they say, oh, let's give this woman a job of $285,000 a year. So this is, this is and you don't, you, you don't even have any shame. You come here and you say, yeah, I'm 100% committed to a, 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 a reverse discrimination lawsuit. You don't even, you're not even aware of how disrespectful that is to the black community and to the community of New Rochelle. And it's for this reason that we will fight. We will never give up. Never. And never. we will fight this hype by any means necessary. Never. I feel like I can be a change that you'll want given time. No. Number six. Who has number six? Hey, uh, welcome to your show. I truly apologize for the rude behavior you've had to tolerate. Oh. <laughs> You're a very brave woman to face the anger and disrespect of this community. And you are also a very, very brave to call out the injustice in the New York City schools when you were faced with discrimination. Therefore, I welcome you to a community where I work hard to pay my taxes for equitable school for all students 
and students attending schools, attending our schools, as to my question. Our district has taken more than a few hits to express its reputation, particularly academically. To move on to something more important. What are your plans to restore and enhance our reputation as a school leader? So that, so that I can be, that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. That's the attitude. Everyone has the opportunity to ask the question. Go ahead, Mr. Bailey. But one of the first things that attracted me to New Rochelle was some of the wonderful things that happen here. And I think to capitalize on the arts and the sciences and the sports programs and the accelerated programs, all of the language programs and opportunities there, this is a famous community. It is a place that people well respect. I know you've had challenges and fractures and concerns and safety issues, and I understand that those things have to be changed, but there is so much to celebrate, and that public image and putting it out there of all of the wonderful things that happen here at the same time we're working on the challenges, I think it's one way to do that. Being recognized for that, being um, in the newspapers and in Twitter and all of the different ways you put the reputation out there, it is a wonderful community that has that. I think that there is so much more work that can be done, but part of it is being able to come into a community and work together to figure out how we want to best do that. Exactly. And I have said publicly before that I do not believe reverse racism exists. And I, I, absolutely, I absolutely believe that my colleagues understand racism to be race um, prejudice plus power. We, we do understand that. I, I really want the community to hear us. I, you asked me a question and I'm giving you the most honest answer I can provide, which is the board supports Dr. Fejo and it is clear that the lens through which we were looking is not aligned with the lens the community wants us to look through. And that will inform future decisions. We are here and we are committed to do the hard work. This has not been easy for any of us. And we understand that our decision has brought you out. At, at the, and that is, in many ways, that has been very, very, very painful, and I understand that, and I regret the pain that has been caused by this decision, but I will say this, that for the first time, we are having conversation of the side at this level, and that is something that's important and should be sustained. These conversations need to continue to happen. No, we're not interested in the conversation. You made a million dollar mistake. I, this we, is a one point one. With all due respect, there's mistake. no there's not gonna be heckling. You asked the question and you I didn't answer both. my question. I, I asked both. Her, what are you going to do to remove her I, but, from but the I, position so what I said, of the current power? What I said what I said is that the board of education supports her in this position but you don't cannot be any clearer about that. You're supporting a stranger, but you're not supporting the community. Now you got to be before the meeting and got number two. We, we settle down so that we can hear from our last community member. I'll try to be brief. Um, I object to the way you were introduced. In my eyes and in the eyes of many of the people in this room who are not the next school superintendent in New Rochelle and who never will be the next school superintendent in New Rochelle. Uh, our uh, strategic roadmap promises diversity and cultural competence, our school's faculty and educational leadership. Your lawsuit against the New York City Department of Education for so-called reverse discrimination is an open declaration of resistance to diversification of educational leadership. Yeah. It is a declaration of cultural incompetence. And it is clear evidence that you're absolutely unqualified to lead the group of Michelle schools. It's also obvious now that you are not a uniter, you are a divider. You are a polarizer. And the longer you pretend to be the heir to the New Rochelle school system, the deeper those divisions and the deeper that polarization will go. Every day you continue this charade does harm to our community. And my question to you is, 
When will you decide that enough harm has been done? And that book. This is the last question. I really do want to offer you that I am committed to really doing this work. I know it is a challenge. I hear the division. I have so much to share and so much to learn here in New Rochelle. There are so many opportunities that I think can happen if we do work together. I have to agree with the President that there is an opportunity for the open dialogue and conversation so that we can find a path forward. And I always believe that there is a path forward in education.